In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and from into the age of all ages. Amen. Christ is risen. Uh, today is the second Sunday of the Holy 50 Days, and if you remember, last Sunday we read about what? We, we spoke about the gifts of the blessings of the resurrection, but we call it Thomas Sunday or New Sunday when the Lord came the Sunday following the resurrection to visit his disciples uh, and or including uh, St. Thomas. And the, the main message we were saying, we said there were many gifts, but the probably the most prominent of the gifts that we spoke of last week relating to St. Thomas and the remember. He said there were five. He said one of them was peace, joy, forgiveness. Well, pre the priesthood grants us the forgiveness, so it's the gift of the priesthood by which we get the forgiveness of sins. Eternal life, which is the last one, and the most prominent, we, <laughs> we didn't say yet. When you, talk, when you think of St. Thomas Sunday, you think of faith, right? Um, so we spoke of um, the importance of having faith in order to attain eternal life. Okay, faith in the Lord, of course. And here the Lord continues the same theme. Last week and the week before, we read from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 20. This week we, speak, we read from the Gospel according to St. John. All the Sunday Gospels of the Holy 50 are from St. John. Um, this week is chapter 6 where he talks about, I am the bread of life. And the theme is actually repeated another time in the year in the blessed month of Amshir for a different reason. Um, <clears throat> but today here the Lord talks, he starts and ends with the importance of having faith, and by faith we have life. For example, in the beginning of the gospel, um, he, says today, he says to them, I am the bread of life, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Uh, and then he says, Uh, this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. This phrase, I will raise him up at the last day, he actually says in these 10 verses three times. Um, <clears throat> and then at the end, uh, yeah, so the important, so in the beginning and the end, he says, He who believes in me either shall never hunger or thirst, or he will have everlasting life and he will raise him up. So, we won't go too much in, uh, in this today, but in terms of having faith in the Son of God, this is, this is a deep knowledge of, of the Lord. It's the difference between knowing about someone and knowing that person personally. Or it's the same difference between attending the liturgy and experiencing it. Or praying and experiencing the blessings of prayer. So, there's d different knowledge, levels of knowledge, and there's different levels of experience. And the more experience you have, and the more focus you have with it, the deeper you go e each time. It's like every time we come to the liturgy, we should go deeper each time, uh, because we have a new and more profound relationship with God. The same thing when we pray, the same thing when we confess, the same thing when we fast. It should be it should be that way. But oftentimes we regress and we go back. Um, but at least we've had a certain experience in the past that we know that we can attain. And by the grace of God, we strive to attain even more than that. And that's why, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in the adult meeting. But that's why when the Lord Jesus Christ said, also in the gospel according to St. John, he said, and this is eternal life that, what? they may know you, the one true God. So one description that the fathers have of what we're going to do in heaven is we're going to get to know God more. And because God is infinite um, in his wisdom, but also in his beauty and in his love and, and, and in his knowledge, it will take eternity to know God. Um, <clears throat> and the more, same thing with the liturgy, like, one liturgy, you know, uh, someone was texting me the other day, you see one liturgy a week, it's not enough. Well, even if you attend, attend liturgy every day, it might not be enough. Meaning, there's so much more to explore and to enjoy 
um, in, in the liturgy. The same thing goes with reading the Holy Scriptures. Same thing goes with growing in, in prayer. And this is kind of what we're supposed to be shooting for during this time of the Holy 50 Days. Christ is risen from the dead and he was victorious over death and over sin and over all um, things that separate us from him. So because of that, we should be realizing that there's there's more to just than just overcoming sin in our spiritual life. There's getting to know God and living a heavenly life, which is a level above uh, just trying to fight this passion or this desire or overcome this weakness. <clears throat> Both are important, but the secondary is much more uh, greater and extensive than, than just fighting against sin. Uh, in St. Cyril of Alexandria's explanation in this passage, when he talks about um, how Christ is the bread of life, and he says that he, he calls to mind what the Lord said to his disciples in the gospel according to St. Matthew, um, because he was speaking in parables, right? And one reason why he was speaking in parables is because, and it said without a parable, St. Matthew says without a parable, he did not speak to them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the prophet in the psalm saying, I'll open my mouth in parables, I'll utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. And then when he, he was with his disciples, he would explain these parables to them. And so the idea here is, is what St. Cyril says, is that we come to the Lord, or even when people are far from the Lord, they understand a certain level of things, but the deeper we go with him, the more we begin to understand. It's not just um, things on the surface. So um, that's why the things with God are full of mystery. And when something is full of mystery, you can never stop studying it. You can never stop enjoying um, it. <clears throat> and uh, like we say, or like St. Gregory writes in his Divine Liturgy, when he talks about the sacrament of the Eucharist, he says, um, you have given me, well, basically he's talking to the Lord, and he's saying, you have given me, the, the priest is saying me, but actually he's saying it on behalf of all the people, people saying you have given me this great mystery of life, the, the bread of life, the Eucharist. And then he says, you are, he who has given me this service full of mystery. Uh, you have given me the partaking of your flesh in bread and wine. So here he's saying, and there's a lot more that, that uh, St. Gregory is pounds on relating to this point, but the fact that is God keeps giving us more and more and more. And these are the different steps of revelation. Um, like, for example, and I think we mentioned this earlier, but nevertheless, this is a very beautiful passage that we read the day after the resurrection feast on, on Monday following um, Easter Sunday. Uh, the church, in her wisdom, um, reads from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, when, after the resurrection, when the two disciples of, or two apostles, St. Cle Cleopas, and according to the uh, tradition, St. Luke, because he wrote the gospel, that Gospel, um, were walking about seven miles to another city of Emmaus. And along the road, they met who? They met the Lord Jesus Christ. But they didn't know. So the same thing is like, we're coming to the liturgy, or we're reading the Bible, we're standing up to pray, and we know God is around, but we don't have that sometimes, that deep personal relationship or acknowledgement that this is Him, right? Um, and so there's different levels that we have to go through. It's kind of like uh, if there's, like, let's say there's a super magnet, you know, right here. Uh, and, and there is, but it's a spiritual magnet, right? Um, we can't get attracted to it unless we have metal on us, right? So the first step is you put metal on your head. <laughs> the second one is you put metal on your heart. And the third step is you get as close as you can so it can attract you. Because the Lord says, and, and I'll explain a little bit more about this, but here God, or the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, in order to get close to God, God is the one who brings us to him. He says, uh, he says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, unless that super magnet is on. And it's always on. 
Um, but the first step is to transform your mind or to learn with your mind. The more we learn about God, whether it's of the scriptures or the or of the mysteries, the sacraments, or if it's uh, of how to grow deeper in prayer or the lives of the saints or the history of the church or whatever it may be, the more we go learn more, the more metal we're putting right here. Okay, the more it will attract us to the Lord Christ. Okay, <clears throat> um, so all of these things, reading the Bible, spiritual books, listening to sermons, contemplation, um, spiritual growth, attending the liturgy of the word, right? That's why we have, and I said this before, we have the liturgy of the word before the liturgy of the faithful. And you can't, you can't just skip the liturgy of the word and come to the liturgy of the faithful because then your mind will not have any metal. <laughs> you, you, you won't be attracted with your mind. And we have to pray to the Lord, not just with our heart, but with our mind. Um, we have to pray with understanding, like St. Paul says. Um, and as also the psalm says, Your word I have hidden in, in my heart, that I may not sin against you. So anytime we learn something, we put it here, and we put it here. Um, <clears throat> so the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, at first, there was just a stranger who they were walking with. And they were surprised that he didn't, he, he, um, they thought he didn't know anything about what happened um, the days before, about especially they were talking about the Lord's crucifixion and passion and resurrection. Well, they didn't know he had risen from the dead, but they knew that the tomb was empty. And because the disciples had come back and told them that they found the tomb empty. <clears throat> so it says the two of them were traveling together that same day, um, and they spoke or talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was when they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near. So the more we talk about Christ, the more we think of the things of heaven, God is going to come near. Okay? Um, <clears throat> he says, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were restrained. They still were not completely uh, aware of the presence of the resurrected Lord. They knew about him, but they weren't fully, um, no, they didn't know him fully. And that's why it says, St. Luke says, their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Any other passage in the gospel that the same thing after the resurrection where they didn't know him in the beginning and then they knew him? Mary Magdalene on the on the first day, she thought he was the gardener, and then at the end, um, she's she's worshiping him. Who else? The disciples remember when they were fishing, and he said, "Launch out into the in, uh, for for a catch." And then Saint Peter realized, "Oh yeah, he did the same miracle before when we were his uh, disciples. Uh, it's the Lord." So he jumped into the to the um, to the water to come to the Lord uh, Jesus. So. God is in our life, but we, our eyes are not always opened to recognize him and to know him fully. Um, but when you start thinking about him and thinking about spiritual things and talking about it, um, this is how... Uh, so after this, after they were talking about this, Christ um, was telling to the two disciples, he said, at the beginning of Moses and all the prophets from the Old Testament, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So basically he was expound, this means like to translate or to unfold. He was basically saying, okay, yeah, how can you not believe that Christ is risen from the dead? Look at this scripture and look at this prophecy and look at this psalm. It all points to the resurrection of the Lord. So their minds were becoming more filled with this precious metal, right? Um, and sometimes we need help. We need help to fill our minds with these things. That's why we listen to sermons. That's why we speak to uh, spiritual uh, people um, that, that are growing, whether our, our servants or our spiritual guide or father of confession, to help. And that's why you read spiritual books, to put more of these things in so that the mystery of Christ may be expounded, may be unfolded for us. Okay, so that's the first step. <laughs> the second step is that it's not just a mental exercise. We're not... Um, uh, we're not going to school just to memorize things and to learn things. Yes, um, we have to exercise our mind, like we said, but if our hearts are not there, then we're, we're not doing the job fully. 
So, um, in order, like when the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to them, he rebuked them not, not for their lack of knowledge, but he says, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe. So sometimes our hearts are slow to believe, like, like with Thomas, for example. Um, uh, and, and even after they start, they, they finally saw him at the end, they were like, oh yeah, that was him because our hearts were burning within us. So sometimes we might not acknowledge God fully or feel his presence, but our hearts are itching or they're burning within us when we hear something or when we are praying or when we come to the liturgy, we know something happens, but maybe it's a glimpse or maybe we suppress it or maybe ignore it and think it's, I'm just being emotional today. No, like the spirit is working to transform our minds, but also our hearts. And when your heart burns within you, then you, you, uh, you kindle that fire and make it grow more passion for the Lord God. Um, <clears throat> he says, well, so the disciples are saying, well, when he opened the scriptures to us, our hearts were kindled. And when he spoke to us, our hearts were burning within us. So knowledge is one thing, but praying with our hearts is another. And we need to have both. That's why some people say, oh, I'll, I'll just study, but I won't, I won't pray with Agbeya, or I won't. Um, learn the hymns, or I won't practice the presence of God. Um, or other people will do the opposite. They say, I'll just do the spiritual things, but I don't need to learn. I don't need to learn more. I know Christ is risen from the dead, and I know Christ is God. That's all I need. No, we actually need to have the, the two. We need to have the metal on our mind and the metal in our heart. The last step is that we come as close to the presence of God as we can. We don't fight against it, and we don't put any obstacle in the way. Um, like, even if you have a super magnet, and you have all this metal, but you put, like, you put maybe two or three feet of jello in front of it, it's not going to be attracted, right? So we have to remove that jello, <laughs> or whatever the trash is in the way. Um, <clears throat> or if you have a wall that's built. Even if you feel attracted, you're going to hit the wall, but you're not going to come close to Christ. Um, so all the things, all the barriers that separate us from the Lord is, is what we have to take away. And the closer we get, the more we attend, the more we follow with our body. So it's our minds, our hearts, and our bodies. Um, and what did the disciples do that were so, was so um, uh, wise? When, when they came close to the Lord. So the Lord was walking with them, and then all of a sudden he's, okay, thank you, I, I already reached my place, see you guys later. Is it, they said, no, 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 we, we need you. And, and, and St. Luke says they constrained him. They basically, not, not like forced him, but they pressured him to stay with them. And that's what we need to do. <clears throat> of course, God doesn't need any pressure to be, he wants us to be with them, but he wants us to have that desire to be with him, and, and we have to constrain him in, in our prayers and our relationship with him. I will, I will not give my eye slumber until I find a place for the Lord. And they told him, abide with us, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent, and he went to stay with them. If, if they didn't pressure him, they wouldn't have realized that this was the Christ, right? Um, so we say, no, I have to insist to come to liturgy. I have to insist to confess. I have to insist to pray even if I don't feel it. I have to insist to learn the hymns. I have to insist to read the Bible because if I don't, then um, he might not reveal himself to me. Um, or my eyes will still be darkened. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the way we grow in the spirit is by opening our eyes to see the greatness of God. Um, so if we learn with our minds, if we pray with our hearts, if we are, attend with our bodies and follow closely, then our eyes will be open to see the greatness of God. Then we will love the liturgical life and everything related to it. Then we will be prepared for heaven on earth and prefer heaven over earth. Uh, because when, when did the disciples, when were their eyes open in this passage? And that's why we, that's why we're talking about this passage today. So 
he brought uh, they brought them with him and they had a meal and then he started praying and he broke the bread and then they knew so the idea here is in the liturgy that's where our eyes are fully open um, <clears throat> he, he, he celebrated liturgy with them as the fathers explained and that's when they finally knew it wasn't at the scripture the scripture was important but it wasn't enough um, it wasn't when he had the discussion with them. The discussion was important and their hearts were burning within them, but it still wasn't enough. But when they celebrated liturgy, then it was complete. So we have to do all of these things in order for our spiritual eyes to be open to reveal the transfigured and the resurrected Lord. <clears throat> um, and right when they knew him, he disappeared. Why? Because that's all they needed to do. That that's Once they saw him, with the eyes of their heart, they didn't need to see them, him with the eyes of the flesh. And the same thing with us. We're in the continuation of this life where we don't see Christ in the, with, the, with the eyes of our, of our flesh. We see him with the eyes of our heart. And that's all we need, um, at least now, until we get to the heavenly kingdom. <clears throat> so to conclude, as the Lord said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws me. He is the super magnet. Um, who will raise up us on the last day, and we have to be connected to the Lord with learning, with um, praying from the depth of our heart, and coming close to the Lord with the liturgical life as often and as uh, much as possible. We conclude with a quote from St. Augustine, who says, the more you understand God and comprehend him or apprehend him, he seems to be growing in you. He was talking about the verse, he must increase and I must decrease. So, see, the more we get to know God, the more he grows inside of us. Um, he says, but in himself he grows not. God doesn't need to grow. He's already perfect, as St. Augustine says. You understood a little yesterday. You understand more today. You will understand much more tomorrow. So that's, that's the objective of our spiritual life, is to understand more of the greatness of God. And not just on this life, but like we said in heaven, we're going to understand more and more and more and more. And it's going to take eternity to know more about the Lord. It says, the very light of God increases in you, as if thus God increases who remains ever perfect. So he's increasing in you. We have to ask God to allow him to increase in us because he is the bread of life. So the more bread you take in, the, the healthier you become. Of course, physically, there is a point where it's too much. But spiritually, it's never, it's never enough. Um, because the bread that he gives us is the one that makes us more and more and more healthy. Just like the, the manna in the Old Testament. Um, no matter how much um, they didn't take or, or take, it was enough. Um, but they always needed it. We say that's why we need it every day. We need God every day. Not just every Sunday, but we need him every day in our life. And every hour and every minute. Every, because without him, we can't do anything. Um, anything, even anything good. So may the God of grace help us to learn with our mind, to pray with our heart, to attend with our body, and to grow in spirit so that our spiritual eyes may be open to see the resurrected Lord and to live the resurrected life. And glory be to him now and forever into the age of ages. Amen.